Hi guys, Stas here. Today we're going to be talking about four ways that you can reuse your yeast from batch to batch, focusing specifically on methods best suited for your average home brewer. Before we start looking at the different methods, let's answer the question of why would you want to reuse your yeast? There's a number of reasons why you might want to reuse your yeast. However, the most common reason is to cut down your costs. If you're practicing good sanitation and harvesting techniques, you can spread the cost of a single packet of yeast across seven to 10 batches, bringing your cost of the liquid yeast down from around $15 Australian down to $2 Australian per batch. Another benefit of reusing your yeast is you're much more likely to be pitching a good amount of healthy yeast to ferment your beer. Good pitching rates of healthy yeast will greatly reduce the chances of common beer off flavors. Yeast rinsing. First technique is called yeast rinsing. Often referred to home brewers as yeast washing, which is actually a different process using a low pH mixture around 2 to 2.5 pH. It's a phosphoric acid mix which is used to wash the yeast prior to pitching. Yeast rinsing is commonly used by home brewers and involves collecting all of your trub after you've racked the beer into your packaging vessels. Pour approximately two liters of boiled and cooled water and mix the trub around to get everything into suspension. Allow the mixture to settle for approximately 10 minutes and you'll start to see the separation or stratification of the different layers. The top layer is mainly water. The middle layer, a thin white layer, is where the yeast is and the bottom layer is the trub, hot matter, etc. It'll be a browny green colour. You want to carefully decanter off the water uh, from the top. You can save this and allow it to settle in the fridge to collect even more yeast. Then carefully decanter the yeast into a clean and sanitised jar and discard the bottom layer. You can repeat this process another time to further separate the trub from the yeast but it's largely unnecessary. This method works because the trub is much heavier than the yeast cells and it drops out of suspension much quicker than the yeast. Second method, overbuilding your starter. This is my preferred method for getting more out of my yeast packet. When making a starter for a beer, I make an extra 250 mil to 500 mil more than I need. To learn how to make a yeast starter, you can check out our video that I did earlier in the description, either in the box or below. When pitching that yeast starter into the wort, pour off the extra 250 to 500 mils that you made into a clean and sanitized container for later use. Next time you want to ferment a beer with that same yeast strain, use a starter to build up that little sample again and repeat the overbuilding process. Method number three, pitching on top of a yeast cake. Probably the easiest method of all. The tricky part of this method is timing your brew day to coincide with racking another beer of the same yeast you want to use. Once you've racked the beer off the yeast tube or cake, simply put the unfermented wort directly onto the yeast cake. Make sure that the wort going onto the yeast cake is not too hot, as this will kill the yeast. Ideally, you want the wort to be between 18 and 22 degrees for an ale and 10 to 14 degrees C for a lager. Check the yeast specification for exact temperature guidelines. This method works particularly well for beers with a high gravity where lots of yeast is required. Generally, it's good practice to start with a lighter colored beer with little to no dry hops and step up for the second beer. Something like this. Brew number one will be a lager. Brew number two pitched onto that yeast cake will be a Baltic Porter. Or brew number one will be a stout or a porter and brew number two an imperial stout or a porter or brew number one would be a pale ale and brew number two a double ipa you can also put the same beer on top of a yeast cake it will be a massive over pitch of yeast but there's better than under pitching fourth method the yeast dump this requires a specialized design of fermenter, either a conical fermenter or even the newer varieties such as the Fermentosaurus or Brusilla to do this method properly. Make sure all the equipment used is thoroughly cleaned and sanitized. Once the beer is finished fermenting, but before dry hopping, pull off the trub into a waste bucket container until you see a change in the color to a white or beige thick creamy liquid. This is your fresh healthy yeast. 
Collect this in your cleaned and sanitised containers for later use. Stop collecting the yeast once the mixture becomes thin. Store this yeast in the fridge until later use. To reuse this fresh yeast in another batch, ideally within a couple of weeks of collection, Giga Yeast recommends the following pitching rates by weight of yeast slurry. For wort up to 17 Plato or around 1.070 specific gravity, use 10 to 17 grams of yeast slurry per litre of wort. For example, in a 23 litre batch, you would need around 230 to 390 grams of yeast slurry. For beers greater than 17 Plato or larger than 1.070, you'll use more slurry. So they recommend 20 to 27 grams of yeast slurry per litre of wort. What's the best way to store your yeast once you've collected it? No matter how you collect your yeast, the best way to store them is in the fridge. It's best to use the yeast within a week or two, but they can be revitalised with a starter if you've stored them for longer. Make sure you label your yeast jars by strain, generation and date so you don't lose track of what is what. A little safety note, yeast can trap a lot of gas between the cells after they flocculate out. So it's a good idea to vent any pressure in the collection vessel after a few days. It's a good idea to also use either a sturdy glass collection jar, or if you're a little bit worried about glass exploding, you can use a Tupperware container as well. So that's four different ways that you can start reusing your yeast at home to make better, cheaper beer. Who doesn't want that? If you enjoyed this video or found this useful, please click the like button and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of our future content. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Until next time, this has been Stas with another Brew Like A Pro video brought to you by Beer Co. See you next time.